Friends, welcome to my workplace at Ranaghat, West Bengal, India. This is a cataract with grade 2 plus nuclear sclerosis. There is history of trauma. Let us see what happens as I do capsular X. See the whole lens moves. However, the rexis was not difficult. I could do an adequate sized capsular axis, fairly round in no time. And now see what happens as I do hydrodissection. As I do hydrodissection, you find that the nucleus refuses to rotate. There is too much resistance and it is not rotating. However, it rotated ultimately with bimanual maneuvers. But see what happens now. As I try to manage the nucleus, at one point I find that there is some prolapse of vitreous through the left sideboard. Yes, I could make out clearly at this time. I come out, inject air and ask for tramsnolone acetate. Inject tramsnolone acetate and as I use Simco and remove the tramsnolone acetate, I find that there are vitreous strands at the left sideboard. Lot of vitreous strands and some of them have come out through the left sideboard. So at this time I want to put a CTR because it is going to take some time to get the vitrectomy cutter ready. So by this time I am going to stain the anterior capsular rim and place the capsular tension ring. And now I remove the excess dye, inject visco and then make two sideboards, one at 8 o'clock, another one at 4 o'clock. These two sideboards will be needed at various times. And now I am placing the capsular tension ring. The leading end of the capsular tension ring is placed in the capsular bag with the help of this Sinsky hook. The Sinsky hook helps the leading end to go behind the anterior capsular rim. Now I use two forceps, advance the CTR. And now to place the trailing end of the CTR, I take Macpherson's in my right hand and a Sinsky hook in my left hand. And here it goes. The trailing end of the CTR goes in the capsular bag. And now I am going to trim the vitreous strands going through these two newly made side boards. 8 o'clock and 4 o'clock. nicely trimmed and now I manage the nucleus. The vacuum has been reduced to 300 initially it was 450 and flow rate has been reduced to 30 and very slowly 
uh, managing the nucleus I still find some tendency of the antechamber to become unstable but see the air bubbles they are not moving so there is not much of fluid turbulence and I am far below the corneal endothelium and here it is I could get the left half of the nucleus epinucleus complex and it came out nicely and so the nucleus and left half of the epinucleus has been removed now I inject visco and place this half of epinucleus inferiorly with the help of this Sinsky hook and then I come out inject some visco behind this epinuclear sheet and use low vacuum and low flow rate to remove this piece of epinucleus And now I use bimanual irrigation aspiration to remove the cortical lens matter. At this time, the pool is always tangential and not centripetal. Centripetal pool will cause more stress on the jonular fibers. Yes, the cortical cleanup has been very nice in this case and now the bag is filled up with visco 2% HPMC and a single piece monofocal intraocular lens is placed in the capsular bag and now as I remove the visco from the antechamber and the capsular bag I find some fibers at 5 o'clock and it didn't come out easily and I stopped aspirating I went again with the cutter and trimmed these fibers because it may be vitreous strands it may not be cortical fibers so the cortical cleanup has been nicely done and now the side ports are closed by hydrating corneal stroma this patient didn't reveal history of trauma it was discovered on the operation table the antechamber is nicely formed and the case is concluded thank you very much for your attention hope this video will help you in managing such cases in your practice